In today's video, I'm making several Dollar Tree DIYs for my tiered trays in both a classic farmhouse style and a modern farmhouse style. For the items in the classic farmhouse style, I'm using a wooden birdhouse, a wooden butterfly, a round wooden disc from Dollar Tree, as well as some tissue paper, you could choose any print you like, and a stencil and a stack of three mini books. For my birdhouse, I painted it with two coats of white chalk paint. And then I took my tissue paper and you can choose any print you like for this. I do a lot of gray and white in my decor, which is why I chose this one from the wedding section. And I just cut out sections that would fit onto the birdhouse. And then I made my own Mod Podge because I had run out. I just watered down school glue and that always works pretty well. And then I applied the Mod Podge to the birdhouse once the paint was dry and I put the tissue paper on top of the Mod Podge and put more Mod Podge on top of the tissue paper. Now, going back, because <laughs> I had to redo one of the sides so I kind of learned a lesson. Tissue paper is so thin, you really can just cut your pieces or even better, tear your pieces of tissue paper. Tearing would be preferable to cutting because then the edges blend a little bit better. Didn't figure out that out till the end but you can just put your tissue paper onto the birdhouse and put the mod podge over top it's less sticky and messy and easier to work with so if i had to go back and do this again that's what i would do i wouldn't put mod podge first i would just put my tissue paper down and then put a layer of mod podge on top of it the tissue paper is so thin that the mod podge soaks right through so i think that that would be fine and i had to redo a side and that's the method that i used and it worked just fine and I did allow the tissue paper to overlap the edges just so it would be like completely covered. But again, instead of my scissor, if I could go back, I would just tear the excess off and then Mod Podge those edges on to the side and torn paper blends better than cut paper. But you know, you craft and you learn. And I found it useful to use this little Dollar Tree putty knife to kind of smooth out the tissue paper and Mod Podge. And then I used my little craft knife to cut away any excess at the base of the birdhouse. You could cover it with the tissue paper if you wanted to. I wanted mine to stay white. And then I applied masking tape to the roof in thinner stripes and thicker stripes. I was going for a grain sack type of pattern. It's a two-step process because once your thinner stripes are dry, you take the masking tape off and then you go back and mark off thicker stripes and you do the same thing all over again. But obviously you want that first set of stripes to be completely dry. I painted over the stripes first with the base coat, the white, and then I went back with the pink, that's the color that the stripes are actually going to be, and that helps you to get a nice crisp line. So if you paint first with the base coat, whatever your base coat is, mine was white, and then come back with the color for the stripe, you'll see my lines are really nice and crisp. And once your stripes are dry, you take off that masking tape and it's magic. <laughs> If you enjoy my craft videos, I would love it if you'd subscribe here to my DIY channel. I also have a thrifting channel and a home and garden channel if you're interested. And here's what my birdhouse looked like with its cutie little green sack stripes on the roof. So you could see the thicker stripe and the thinner stripe. And then I gave the whole thing a coat of my Craft Smart varnish, which I'm not sure if they sell this anymore or if my Michaels has just been out of it. So I'm a little at a loss. I need to find a new top coat. I'm thinking I'll just bite the bullet and buy some polycrylic, which is expensive. <sighs> that was the great thing about this Craft Smart varnish is that it's cheap, but I can't find it anymore. Anyway, so I gave the whole thing a top coat. You could just use Mod Podge too. I could just use Mod Podge if I wanted to. And this is what it looked like. It was totally cute as it was, but I decided to use some of my little wood beads to add feet, just because I thought that would be a little extra detail. So I did wind up just attaching those to the bottom of the birdhouse with hot glue. And then I painted the whole thing with a coat of chalk paint. And if you know anything about me, I love to add boxwood in places. So I added a little sprig of boxwood into the opening of the birdhouse. 
And here is the final product. Oh my goodness, I think it's so cute. And you really could make several of these for different holidays if you change up your tiered tray decor for the different seasons like I do. I am not showing you these items on my tiered tray because here's my tiered tray that I made from Dollar Tree products. I can link that above and in the description. I am doing a video showing how I decorate tiered trays using this one and another one on Wednesday, March 3rd on my home and garden channel. So check that out if you wanna see how I actually use these items that I'm making on my tiered trays. For the next DIY, I'm going to be making a stack of mini books to go on my tiered tray. I made a similar stack for Valentine's Day, if you saw my DIY video for Valentine's Day, and you could definitely make them so that they could be change upable, but they're so tiny that I don't mind making different little stacks for the different holidays. I have my stack of three books, which I've given two coats of white chalk paint and a coat of Mod Podge. And then I also have some scrapbooking letters from my scrapbooking letter stash. And if you don't have mini letter stickers, you could use a stencil. You could print something out on your computer. You could hand letter. You could use stamps. If you have a Cricut, you could do that. So lots of options for putting words on the spines of these books. If you're using separate letters like I am, I always start at the end of the word just so that I can get the spacing correct. So that's what I was doing here because I wanted all of my words to end at the end of the right end of the books. And I did find that using a little tweezer that I have helped in applying the little mini letters. So you can see here, it just makes applying those teeny tiny letters a little bit easier. This stack of books is going to go on my dining table on a little tiered tray that I have as my centerpiece. So I asked my kids what they thought the books should say and they said, eat, laugh, repeat. <laughs> so that's what we went with. And once I was satisfied with how the letters looked, I just put a coat of Mod Podge over them just to make sure that they stay on there really well. And then I put a little extra on the spines. And then I used my hot glue to attach the books together. And then I grabbed two ribbons that I liked from my stash. These are from, one is from Joann's and one is from the Dollar Tree. I just pick up ribbon when I see it, when it's on sale and I just keep a stash because I know I'm a crafter. So Dollar Tree doesn't always have what I want for my decor. And then this one I got at uh, Joann's like two years ago. I love this ribbon. I wish they would bring it back because it really matches in my house. But I cut a length of ribbon that would fit around the books and then I just glued it in place at the back of the book stack. And I use this muted pink as an accent in my decor right now anyway so I really wanted to put a pink ribbon there too so I just used this burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree but it was too thick so I just cut a piece from the thicker ribbon and then I pulled out strings you know how you make burlap ribbon look frayed see there I'm just kind of pulling the strings out so that the edge would look frayed And then I wrapped that ribbon around the books. And then I just tucked a little boxwood sprig in behind that pink bow. And here's what it looks like all finished. And every time I go to the Dollar Tree, I look for the little mini books. They're not always there, but they're often there. And so I'd love to be able to make these for the different holidays or for different events. So it's a good item to have in your stash. For this next piece, I'm duplicating something I saw on Pinterest. I'm using the base of this butterfly that I got at the Dollar Tree, as well as this wood circle, and then also some patch and paint that I also got at the Dollar Tree. You could use any kind of wood filler 
So the first thing that I did was just to fill the holes in the base from the butterfly and also the hole in the little wooden circle. Once that was dry, I sanded both pieces and gave them two coats of white chalk paint. Then I had this decal that I created on my Cricut. So I really tried to find fonts that would really duplicate the piece that I saw on Pinterest. And the sign on one side will say, this is us. And on the other side, because it's for a two-tiered tray, so you see it from both sides, I used a Dollar Tree stencil to stencil the other side which you could do if you don't have a Cricut. If you don't have a Cricut, you could also use letters, you could hand letter, whatever you like to do. The Dollar Tree really has been having some great stencils, so I just pick them up when I see them. This one I got recently, and I really liked it for the leaf pattern, but for this one, I'm gonna use the words as well. So I always tape my stencil in place. You could use stencil adhesive, which helps to prevent bleed through, but I didn't feel like it. So I just taped it in place where I wanted it to be. And then as usual, I painted over it with the base coat. So I always do that and that does help with bleed through. It doesn't completely prevent it, but it helps. So I gave it a coat of white paint and then I came back with the black paint. And even though it looks like a pretty quick process in the video, you do want to let the coat of white paint completely dry before you come back with the color for your stencil. And I like to use a stencil brush, but you can also use a makeup sponge, whatever you like. I do do the dab technique, like pat, 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 pat. It might be called stippling if I was being technical, but it's all a matter of personal preference. And I don't use a very wet brush when I stencil. I dab off a lot of the paint because it's better to have to go back over a surface rather than have big globs of paint. And then once the paint was totally dry, I pulled off the stencil. And you can see it's not a perfect stencil, but I think it does a pretty good job. And off camera, I gave it a coat of Mod Podge, and then I also attached the sign to the base and wrapped twine around it. And this is what the finished product looks like. These items are going to be in my dining room on that tiered tray, so the family will see them a lot. So I really wanted the things that they say to be inspirational. Okay, let's move on to the DIYs I made for my, what I like to call, modern farmhouse two-tiered tray with kind of a boho vibe. So for this first one, I found this little home sweet home wooden house with light at the Dollar Tree. I won't be lighting it up, but you could light it up. I mean, there's no reason you can't. So I went ahead and used my antique wax. This antique wax is by Art Mines, mostly because I have not been able to get my hand on another bottle of the Waverly. Uh, antique wax. I put a little on my paint tray and then I added a little bit of water because I used this wax more as a stain rather than a wax. So I went ahead and applied a complete coat to the entire thing inside and outside. It goes on really nicely with a brush. Then I used my rag and I just wiped away any blobs and then I did touch up with my brush if there were any areas that I'd missed or that were lighter. Then I used my heavy duty scissor tool. I don't know what to call this. My mother-in-law got it for me from QVC. And I just cut away that wood piece, which I missed out on getting the footage of. And then I stuck, stuck my favorite boxwood in the top of it. I didn't even glue it in. So I could change this out for other seasons if I wanted to. I could make it fall-like. I could do it for Christmas because it just says home sweet home. And then I made an unplanned addition. I decided to just wrap some twine around the little thing. I'm always adding details. Do you do that when you craft? It's like, oh, let me add this little thing. So I just wrapped twine around it several times and tied a little bow. And here's the finished product for my tiered tray. I love it.
For my next DIY, I found this little mini blackboard in the Crafter Square at the Dollar Tree. I also had this little wreath in my stash. I got it from Michael's last year. I am sure they still have them. It's like 55 cents. And then I pulled some greenery. This isn't actually the greenery that I wound up using. I wound up using Dollar Tree greenery, one of those fuzzy bushels from like two years ago, but I'll, you'll see that later on. <laughs> So I used my same stain and water mixture and just did the same exact thing. I just applied it to the frame and wiped it off and then put on another coat. And this little frame had some pretty intense wood grain, which I thought was kind of cool. So I don't know, some people don't like that, but I liked the different shades in the wood grain. And then I got my little wreath and the Dollar Tree greenery that I was telling you about, and I just snipped off pieces. And the idea here is I'm just making a little tiny wreath. Now you could use floral wire, but it's such a tiny wreath that I didn't really feel the need to do so. But if you're more comfortable, you could definitely wire this on. And so I just used my hot glue and I put down two base layers just to kind of cover the Grapevine. It's not that I don't want it to show at all, but I want the greenery to both mostly be what's showing. So you can see here, I just took two flatter pieces of greenery and kind of covered the grapevine with that. And then I put more greenery on top of it. And then I got my twine again, and I just hung my little wreath on my chalkboard. I love this piece. I think this might be my favorite or one of my favorites. I'm thinking of making a larger size version to hang in my house somewhere. For my next DIY, I took this wood cup that I found at the Dollar Tree and I put thick painter's tape on it. So I would put a stripe and then put another piece down and then put another piece down and pull off that center piece. And that gave me stripes that were somewhat similar in width and I was going to be staining the ones that were exposed. Now it's not perfect because I the tape is not the perfect like division of the, the circumference of this little container so one of the stripes does wind up being thicker but for the most part it looked pretty cool. And then I took my watered down stain again and painted in the stripes. Now Here's a tip. If you decide to do this, I would actually not water down the antique wax for this one. I would actually just use it at its normal thickness. The reason being, because it's watered down, it bled a little under my tape and I think it would bleed less if I had used it just as a straight up wax. I figured out a solution, which you'll see in a second, but here I'm just wiping down the excess and then adding a little more. You just kind of add it on and take it off until you like the way that it looks. And here I took off the tape and you can kind of see where it bled. So all that I did was actually just take my rag and I blended the stripes where they had kind of bled. And that made a really nice transition from the dark to the light. And again, if you wanted crisp stripes, you know, then just use the wax without adding water to it. But I thought this was a good solution for my little oopsie. <laughs> And then all that was left to do was to put a little bit of flower foam in it and guess what I added? You guessed it, boxwood. <laughs> Here's the end result. I really like it. I did put a coat of Mod Podge over it because the stripes that don't have any color were just bare wood. I love it. I think it turned out great. And you know, if I were to buy this at TJ Maxx, it would cost me like nine bucks. This final project, I'm actually adding one to each of my trays, so I thought I'd just do them both here. You could use these for classic farmhouse, modern farmhouse, whatever. So these are just the little ceramic paintable things that you find at the Dollar Tree. They're meant for children. I know I've used the bunnies a million times, but I've never used these other shapes. And I was like, what can I do with these shapes? Well, I was inspired by my friend Jamie from Border Bananas. I will link her in my description box below. She, she had bought something at a thrift store and painted it and used white wax. And I was like, oh man, I could totally do that on these little minis. So I painted one egg green and I'm gonna put this on my little boho tray. And then I painted the little chicky gray. 
Here they are each with two coats of paint and I did not use chalk paint, I just used acrylic paint because that's what I had. And I took my folk art white wax and you see there, I showed it to you and then dumped it on myself. <laughs> oh dear. But basically when you're working with the white wax, you cover the entire thing that you're wanting to wax with the white wax, which is a little challenging. I did wind up putting these on like the end of a paintbrush and then eventually just put it on the end of my finger so that I could paint the whole thing with the white wax and not leave fingerprints. So once you have it all covered with white wax, then you use a rag to wipe off the excess and then it leaves behind little bits of white wax in your crevices. Now, I think I over wiped the first time. Like I, I haven't used white wax before, so this was kind of a learning experience for me. So I did wind up doing another coat. I don't know if you're supposed to do that, but I just, I wanted the white wax to be a little heavier than it was from the first coat. And here's what they look like all dry. I think they are so cute. Like what a good use of these little things that I never knew what to do with. So I'm super pleased with them. If you liked this DIY video, I would love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you'll be notified every time I upload a video. This is all that I have for you today. I hope this gave you some great ideas for things you can make inexpensively for your tiered trays if you like to decorate them as much as I do. Don't forget to tune in Wednesday, March 3rd to my home and garden channel if you're interested to see how I decorate my tiered trays using all of these items. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Take care.